Hey everybody, it's Aaron here, and today I'm going to be showing you this $300 budget gaming PC. And I will be including the links for where to get the parts and how to build the PC in the description. Yeah, there it is. Ever since the beginning of this channel, I have been using a laptop to create the videos and the live streams on here. And I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to my grandparents that gave me that laptop. How many years ago now? Was it four or five years? It has been serving its purpose for a very long time. And everything that's on this channel has been made with that laptop. So it's done a multitude of things. So as the channel has grown, and as the years have passed by, I've been thinking about getting an upgrade to help further the power behind the editing software so that I could edit more efficiently and also be able to do more live streaming without the crazy lag that we would get when we would try to do anything more complex than, say, Minecraft. You know, it, I wasn't really able to do live streams just on a little bit of an older system. So I started looking into some budget PCs. And the first thing that I had to decide was would I get one pre-built or would I build it myself? Now building my own PC was kind of a dream of mine for a long time. I remember watching videos of people building their own and it looked like something that was kind of daunting but kind of fun to figure out and put together and see if it actually works. But of course, it would be much easier if you could get one pre-built. So I was looking into pre-built PCs. From what I've found, when you buy a PC pre-built, the manufacturer is going to use cheaper parts and they're gonna charge you quite a lot in the price for the assembly fee. Whereas if you build it yourself, you get to pick the parts, you can pick quality parts for a good price, and the only uh, downside is that you have to learn how to build it yourself. If you've never built a PC before, it can be a little bit daunting, but I feel like the experience of building it is way more rewarding because you know the computer best because you learned how to build it yourself. It's really a fun and rewarding experience, at least in my opinion. So let's walk through how I built this PC and also talk about the different parts and some of their specs. And if you wanna buy these parts yourself and build this very same PC, I'll leave links in the description below for the part list and the guide on how to build a PC. I spent around $340 for the PC itself. That does not include a Windows activation key or a few other things that we'll get to towards the end of the video that you're going to want to make sure that you have when building this PC. The first thing that we installed was this power unit. This is a Masterwatt 550 bronze power unit. This unit is what gives the PC its power. This is what you'll end up plugging into the wall and this plugs into the motherboard and into the LED lights in the front and gives the PC all of the power that it needs to run. The next thing that we needed was the motherboard and what we used was the A320M S2H Gigabyte motherboard. This is the brains of the operation. Everything connects to here. And the first thing that we did before we installed the motherboard was we added some RAM, just one stick of eight gigabyte RAM here. Um, that's all that I need for now, and it's very easy to upgrade. If you need more, you can just buy another stick of RAM and you can have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then we installed the CPU and graphics card onto the motherboard. Now, usually a graphics card will be a separate part, but in this case, because we use the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G CPU, it actually comes pre-built with Radon Vega 8 graphics. So your graphics card and your CPU are all in one. So that makes it even easier to assemble. The CPU is what handles things like editing, where it's rendering pictures. And the graphics card is what handles things more on the uh, gaming end, where it's processing different information about the geometry and so on and so forth. And the last thing that we installed was the SSD. It's just a 240 gigabyte one. And I have a two terabyte external hard drive anyway. So uh, the memory didn't have to be a crazy amount, but this is, a, this is a pretty good amount to get you started. And this is kind of like a hard drive, although it's a more uh, modern technological version of one. 
that this is just where you store data on your PC. So it's really important to have some kind of storage system in your PC or else it's not going to have any room to put anything on it. And then of course we have the case itself, which is an arrow cool case, which has this really cool LED light that changes colors when you press the LED button on the top. It's really, really pretty to look at. And there's all kinds of different options for the LED light to make it match with your setup. Now, if you're thinking about building this particular PC yourself, let me give you some tips and pointers about it that we found while building it that I think is pretty important to know that we had to kind of figure out on our own. The first thing that I would say is make sure you read your manuals that come with your parts. There are some things in the tutorial that came along with this build that were kind of left out or slightly different with this particular motherboard. So make sure you read your manuals and check where everything goes because it doesn't get super duper specific with the tutorial. Sometimes, for example, the cord would not fit right. Like for example, with the SSD, uh, the power cord would not fit. And at first that was a bit of a cause for concern. But when we actually looked at the power unit, there were additional cords that came with it. And one of them actually fit the SSD perfectly. So sometimes it's, Based on what hardware you bought, you're not just gonna go the default route. You might have an alternate cord that needs to be used that is not mentioned in the tutorial. That wasn't even mentioned in the manual specifically from what I saw. So you might have to do a little bit of trial and error sometimes. Definitely make sure that the cords are oriented right. There's one part at the end of the build where you have to plug in all of the little connectors up here with the power button and the USB and the LED that are very, very small little cords. And if you don't orient them right, they just won't work. So definitely make sure that you do that correctly. And again, it's not talked about in the tutorial. It's not necessarily talked about specifically in the manual. It's just going to take a little bit of trial and error to get it right. And also, as I mentioned earlier, there are a few things that you're going to need additionally that uh, one of them was not really mentioned in the tutorial, which is actually really important. Um, first of all, what is mentioned in the tutorial is that you're going to need an external flash drive of some, of some kind. Um, I recommend having at least six gigabytes or more, and you're going to need to plug this into another computer put Windows on this flash drive, and then whenever you boot your PC, uh, you plug this in and it will install Windows onto your system. And with a Windows activation key, you don't necessarily need it. You can use Windows for free, uh, but it will be somewhat limited. There are a couple websites, and one of them is included in the tutorial, that let you get an activation key on the cheap, but they are kind of a gray market solution. They're not officially from Microsoft, so you're not guaranteed that they're going to work. So definitely be aware of where you're getting your Windows activation key from. And the other thing that is really important about this particular build that from what I saw in the article, I don't recall seeing any mention of this, this motherboard by default does not have any Wi-Fi capabilities. So you're going to need to either buy a Wi-Fi card or connect an ethernet cable. Or the easiest solution uh, that I found was a USB um, Wi-Fi adapter. And you can get these even at like Walmart or Target. And there's different brands and different ones that range from cheaper to more expensive. Pretty much any of them should work with the system, but the one that I tested specifically with this build was the Netgear brand of Wi-Fi adapters. A big thank you to my sister for going and getting this the day after I built the PC because I had no way to connect it to the internet and no way to further the process of updating the drivers and everything that you do after you build it. And thankfully, she went out and got a really good Wi-Fi adapter and I got it up and running pretty quick. So I really appreciated that. And of course, after you've built your PC, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you update the different drivers such as the graphics card and the motherboard and install, I would recommend installing an antivirus first and then getting all the programs that you enjoy using. And then of course, you're going to need a keyboard, mouse, and monitor, which are going to cost quite a bit extra unless you haven't already invested in that 
beforehand, which luckily and thankfully I did, or else that would be another maybe upwards of 70, 80 bucks if you want them brand new. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure you have all of that figured out as well. Another tip that I recommend is when you buy parts, definitely look for the best price. The prices on these parts fluctuate a lot and Amazon might not always have the best price. It might be over at another site and they might not always have the best price. It might be Amazon. So keep an eye out for these parts. You might have to wait a little bit for the prices to drop. You don't have to get all the parts at the same time. I would just buy each part individually when it's at its best price. Um, and that's how I got it to stay within the $300 range without it getting too, too high up there. And that is how I built this PC build for around $300. And having used it for about a week now, I can say that it has been running very well. It's very fast. The processing end of things, for example, when editing in HitFilm Express is super slick. You can edit there with ease. You shouldn't have any problems. Games will run at, some of them will run at 1080p. I've found the most successful thing to do is to have the graphics pretty much on high, but just let the resolution be a little bit lower at like 720p. Most games will run fine at that. You might have to adjust the settings a little bit depending on which title, but you should get really good frame rates, good resolution, and good quality graphics. And for streaming, you can definitely stream at 720p, 30 frames per second, if you have a good Wi-Fi connection. But for the higher end games, I've had to definitely lower the bit rate and lower the resolution down to 480p. So it definitely, streaming is always a hard thing to do, especially when you're playing a game. So it does struggle a little bit, but it definitely works. You can play a game with pretty smooth frame rate and it might not look the greatest, but it will actually still work and you can still play the game with the settings turned up. So that's pretty cool. If you're looking for a mind-blowing PC that can do just about anything, this is not the build for you. But if you're looking to get a start in having your own PC, or you have been a previous laptop user and want to upgrade a little bit, and be able to run things better and play games that you weren't able to play before, then this build is definitely the build for you. Again, links in the description for the parts list and tutorial on how to build the PC. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like. And if you're new here, we have quite a variety of videos from different uh, comedy skits and live streams, and sometimes just vlogs where I talk about stuff like this. So if you're interested, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.